The president-elect will be heading to Wisconsin this evening for his latest stop on the so-called Trump Thank You Tour. Later this week, he will visit Pennsylvania, Florida, and Alabama to salute supporters who delivered victories in those key battleground states he needed to win the White House. Earlier this morning, it was made official. ExxonMobil chairman and CEO Rex Tillerson is Trump's choice for secretary of state, but the pick has generated intense criticism from both sides of the aisle. Republican senators like Marco Rubio, Lindsey Graham, and John McCain have called into question the oil, man, the oil man's close ties to Russian President Vladimir Putin. For more on this, I want to go to Aaron Blake in the Washington Post newsroom. He's in D.C. He's also a senior reporter for the newspaper. Good to see you, Aaron. Good to see you, too. All right. So while Bob Gates and Condoleezza Rice have endorsed Tillerson, he does lack government or diplomatic experience. Uh, do we know anything about his foreign policy beliefs beyond his ExxonMobil business experience uh, and his connection to Russia. I mean, the fact that he has, Exxon has operations in, you know, many, many countries around the world that he certainly visited does give him a sense of what is going on in the world. But I wonder, will it help with diplomacy? Yeah, we don't really know a whole lot about what his politics are because his, his goal as CEO of an oil company is pretty singular as far as you know making deals uh, overseas so i think that's what really drew donald trump to him uh, as a candidate for this job but we don't really know a whole lot about what he believes obviously the big question around him and has some republicans concern is is the ties to russia just how close those are i expect he's going to be expounding on a whole lot of things and we're going to be learning a whole lot about what exactly his views are but right now um, a lot of it is just kind of a, a, a proximity thing. His proximity to Russia is what's giving these members pause. And we don't know a whole lot beyond that about his policies. And, you know, Aaron, um, one of the things that will be important uh, as Secretary of State, should he be confirmed, is the issue of human rights. It's a very big uh, factor in what a Secretary of State is out there doing, uh, pressing countries that do not allow uh, people to live in the manner that uh, they should be allowed to. And you know, all we know about perhaps where he might stand on something, for example, like gay rights is his experience in the Boy Scouts, which Robert Gates uh, has also said um, is how they got to know each other. I wonder how you see that playing out, given the, uh, uh, the history of the Boy Scouts when it comes to gay rights. Well, I think this is going to be a situation where uh, this is going to be something of a proxy battle between more hawkish Republicans when it comes to Russia and the Trump administration. This is going to be their opportunity to try and affect the way that the administration goes in this direction when it comes to Russia. Obviously, Donald Trump himself has been talking for a very long time about crafting a more friendly relationship with Russia. By nominating Rex Tillerson for this job, there are going to be hearings. Uh, Rex Tillerson is going to be answering questions about what he thinks about that relationship. And these Republicans are going to be able to send that signal that they want to make sure that this administration doesn't get too friendly, doesn't overlook too many human rights uh, violations. And so I, I think ultimately, even if we don't see Republicans voting against this, and by the way, it would be very unusual historically for members of a president's own party to block this nomination, uh, this is going to be at the very least an opportunity for them to set a tone for the rest of this administration, especially on an issue which makes many of them, uh, gives them a, a lot of heartburn, frankly, when it comes to Trump's talk about Russia. One of those uh, senators is Senator Marco Rubio. He put out a statement uh, earlier today saying that he will give him a fair process, but he's been on the record saying that he has serious concerns about uh, Mr. Tillerson's uh, background, uh, especially when it comes to Russia. All they would need, if all the Democrats unite against this confirmation. They would just need three Republicans to also side with the Democrats. And uh, by the way, in the Foreign Relations Committee, all they would need is Rubio to cross over. Republicans have a 10 to 9 majority on that committee. If Rubio joined with all of the Democrats in voting against Tillerson, it stops it in committee. So, uh, you know, Rubio's comments here, I think he, he's the major player at the start of this process. He's the guy who really put out the most skeptical early statement. He had a tweet on Sunday that said a friend of Russia is not what I'm looking for in my secretary of state. I think his statement today was a little bit more measured and allowed for the idea of him eventually voting to confirm Tillerson. He very much left that as an open question, but it, uh, it, it's clear that this is the big hurdle for Tillerson to get over in the committee. And then beyond that, the question is whether members like Jeff Flake, uh, Lindsey Graham, John McCain, uh, James Lankford, a, con uh, a senator from 
Oklahoma has also issued a pretty skeptical statement. So there are hurdles in the way here, but I think um, the, these Republicans have to decide whether they really want to take what would be an extraordinary step in blocking their own president's nominee, and that's a very big thing to, for them to do. All right, so the Tillerson pick is dominating the, headni the headlines, but Mr. Trump is set to add another familiar name to his administration. CBS reports that former Texas governor and GOP rival Rick Perry will be tapped as energy secretary given, I mean, I, we probably don't have to play it, but given that famous <laughs> debate moment where he couldn't name the government agencies he would abolish, uh, and also so, Aaron, his comments calling Trump a, quote, cancer to the Republican Party during the primaries. Uh, are you surprised by this pick? Well, I would say that, you know, Trump has has made made friends with a lot of people who have been very critical of him in the past. So that doesn't really surprise me a whole lot. I, I think this is perhaps one of the less controversial nominations that he'll make. Uh, you know, Democrats certainly don't like Rick Perry, but at least they kind of understand where he comes from. Uh, the Energy Department isn't quite as high a profile job as Secretary of State. I think they'll pick their battles on this. But I, I do think uh, it is a, a fortuitous landing spot for uh, a, a former governor who is looking for something to do that he now is going to head the agency, which he said should be shut down. And uh, they couldn't even remember what it was called. Uh, just eight years ago. And, and, and to be fair to Governor Perry, uh, his success in Texas is probably one of the things that the Trump transition team was looking at, uh, creating jobs. Uh, clearly, he knows uh, how to get things done. Um, but that moment, I think, will live on. Uh, it'll probably continue to dog him no matter where he goes, no matter what he does. Um, as Donald Trump, though, continues to build his team in the transition to the White House, he has pushed off Press, a, a press conference that was originally scheduled for Thursday to address his business holdings. It's also been a month since Trump won the election and more than four months since his last press conference. What is going on here with that? Well, it's, it's pretty clear they don't love the idea of having a press conference. They haven't had one since July. And by the way, this is a, a president-elect now who during the campaign when he was doing a lot of availabilities and Hillary Clinton wasn't, he attacked her for doing that uh, and said that she must be avoiding something. Well, now it's pretty clear that he's avoiding something. He's, of course, very busy, but uh, there was a stat I saw just today that the average president-elect will hold a press conference within four days of being elected president. It's now been more than a month for Trump. Uh, he promised this press conference two weeks ago and is now delaying it into next month. Uh, you know, this is a, a, a troubling thing from a journalistic uh, standpoint. There are lots of questions we'd like for Donald Trump to answer. Uh, we'll see if uh, they decide to do that anytime soon. But I think for now, uh, this reflects the difficulty that they have in dealing with the potential conflicts of interest with his business. They don't know exactly perhaps what they want to do with that. And they're still sorting through some of the details. And so, uh, as we've seen with many things Trump uh, before, uh, they'll say this is happening in a few weeks and sometimes it takes longer than that. Aaron, should we in the media be making more of this, making this a bigger deal? Not just the, uh, the you know, there's been some questions as to whether or not the press is, is focusing on the Russia hacking as much as it should be. But I think the way that the Trump uh, transition team and Mr. Trump himself and many Republicans, in fact, um, paint the press is ant antagonistic that, well, why should we hold a press conference? We don't owe you, the press, anything. But the press conferences aren't for the media. They are for the American people. And I wonder if we should be making a bigger, bigger deal about this. I don't know how, how the press could, but I just get, want to get your thoughts. Yeah, I think it's I think it's out there. I think the press has been making this point. Um, I, I don't know what we can do beyond point it out to the American people. And from them, it's up to from there. It's up to them to decide whether this is something that they care about and whether this is something they want to apply some pressure on. You know, I don't think that there's a whole lot of love lost with Trump supporters for the mainstream media. And I think that's perhaps part of the reason he doesn't feel great urgency to do this. Uh, but there are many outstanding questions out there that uh, that he needs to deal with. And I think at some point, the weight of just those many issues and the fact that he hasn't answered questions about a lot of them, I think that's uh, that's when they start to look at a press conference as something that they need to do in order to just get us off their backs, if nothing else. So I think that's when this is really going to come to a head and they'll ultimately, hopefully, do a press conference. And I wonder, uh, when, I, when I heard you say mainstream media, I wonder um, if we're ultimately going to end up losing that term when you've got the co-founder of Breitbart now in the White House. Uh, that seems pretty mainstream to me, but what do I know? <laughs> Aaron Blake <laughs> at the Washington Post for us today. Thank you so much for t spending some time with us. We appreciate it. Thanks, Vlad. Well, as we mentioned, President-elect Trump will make his latest stop 
on his thank you tour later tonight. He'll be in West Allis, Wisconsin. His remarks are scheduled to begin at 7 p.m. Eastern, and we will have that event live for you right here on CBSN.